Hi, we're here with Mythics today, and we're going to talk about their migration of their sales portal into Oracle Cloud infrastructure and how they've taken their lessons learned from that into working with their customers during their cloud journey. Praveen, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, first of all, why don't we start with telling us a little bit about the sales portal that you've moved into Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Mythics Internet Sales Portal is a data warehouse, uh, a complex system connected with uh, Oracle SaaS NetSuite and also um, connected to some uh, external third-party systems. Tell me a little bit about the services that you ended up using in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Besides uh, virtual networks, we were using compute, object storage, file storage for sharing files, as well as uh, database service on VMs. And then we needed it to be secure. So that's when we looked at uh, a few options and then we looked at uh, Oracle CIS landing zone architecture and we really liked that uh, because it provides you the you know, security from get go instead of uh, you know, building the system and then you know, trying to secure it later. I understand that you've done a lot to augment that and add some additional security and capabilities. Why don't you walk us through what some of that looks like? We needed to have uh, some additional features like uh, uh, data safe and also vulnerability scanning. Also, we wanted to um, extract the IAM and network were tied in the layer zero. So we wanted to build it in layers so that if we needed to do some customizations, we can do in each layer and also be repeatable for uh, other, other projects. We also needed to have ability to customize the compartment names, add additional VCNs, also, we built a security scanner so that uh, we are able to put it in in a you know automated fashion so that we can run these security scans in a regular basis. Can we dive down a little bit deeper into or notice in the bottom left hand portion of your architecture, there was a, a whole host of other customizations in there. I think there were some um, maybe Kubernetes and some other things yes, as well. Yes. So we split this into multiple layers. So starting at the initial layer, which would be IAM identity and access management, where we build the compartments, security based user groups, dynamic groups. But then on top of it, we wanted to build network and then compute and additional services. To achieve all this, we had to build code infrastructure as a code in Terraform. But then to, to provision or to run these uh, multiple layers, we needed to have a mechanism which would orchestrate these multiple layers. Uh, so to start with this, we what we call is a Mythics management server. So initially, once the tenancy is uh, activated or you know blank green tenancy, when there is no uh, resources built, we drop in this management server, and then that would be the responsible to build the rest of the architecture. And the way we do it is we build this in Docker containers uh, deployed to Oracle Kubernetes cluster, and then the code is you know there is a pod for which runs open source Git, which is similar to you know what the DevOps service Oracle DevOps service provides, but we wanted to have it in a way that where we are able to port, you know, port the code, uh, the container from on-prem to OCI. So that's one of the reasons we went with that. And then uh, in addition, you know, we have a built a software library of, you know, modules to do a few things, uh, provisioning, scanning, and then also some Ansible playbooks. So, so there are a lot of code built over the years we were able to reuse here. So all this is orchestrated through Jenkins. And then in addition, we have done some customizations for Oracle FinOps, the cost management, and that is captured in a pod. Uh, we call it FinOps. What it does is it collects the uh, AP, Oracle cost API data and maintains it in a data warehouse. And we are able to build some custom dashboards and reporting on top of what Oracle provides. So we wanted to be able to monitor if there is a specific resource or a specific environment which is going over, let's say, 80% of the allocated budget or you know or if there is a opportunity for cost optimization so we would be able to gather that data and similarly we did something similar for security part of it where on top of the oracle cis landing zone we also made use of benchmark published by cis for oracle tenancy itself uh, this is also available on cis uh, website and this looks at a from a um, tenancy perspective Whereas the landing zone looks at, you know, underneath, like, you know, based on compartments, who has access to what compartment and what resources. Whereas this uh, tenancy specification 
looks at from a tenancy level, like things like uh, were the API keys rotated, you know, regular basis, are there any object storage publicly open, things like that. There are um, multiple uh, sections with uh, each section, uh, several rules. So we build code to validate that. And this benchmark CIS uh, tenancy scan benchmarks has rules and also a mechanism or the way to fix that. So the code we built is to first, it checks for the problems and then also using the automation, uh, we are able to fix that. And we made use of, uh, again, container for this and using Oracle's uh, functions, we are able to uh, package this into a Docker image and run this on a regular basis. That's terrific. I mean, I'm hearing so many exciting things. So tell me about the performance improvements and security improvements that you saw with bringing your sales uh, portal into Oracle yes. Cloud Infrastructure. So, so yeah, we have seen a tremendous uh, improvement in performance and also in terms of scalability. One of the things we are able to do with this is we are actually able to implement a much tighter security uh, because of this compartments and also using the CIS uh, landing zone specification. So people who don't need access, they don't see any of the resources. Whereas in the on-prem, that was not possible. Anybody who could go into data center or access the servers, they are able to. So we are able to uh, implement these security controls and they are actually helping us uh, when we are doing our ISO SOC 2 compliances. Uh, the auditors are looking at this and they are actually very uh, happy with the way we moved it to cloud and be able to implement these security controls. And now for the past one year, uh, every customer we have migrated or we have moved to OCI, they start with this as a you know, starting point as a secure landing zone. So the customers are happy and we are able to um, you know, comply with their requirements. One of our customers uh, wanted to be a GDPR compliant and this helped us get there much faster. So I'm really interested to hear what's next. You know, what type of services and additional applications are you looking to bring onto Oracle Cloud? Yes, since we had a very uh, tight timeline, we had to uh, go with the database service on VM. But now we are actually moving to autonomous database to get all the benefits of autonomous database, you know, like uh, self-healing and, you know, patch maintenance. So we want to get out of that. So th that project is actually underway. Right now we have two instances running. One is in, you know, production, which is on VM, but the one we are going to move to, we are maintaining in autonomous. So soon we're going to flip over. So that's one of the immediate enhancement we are looking at. In addition, uh, we are also a beta customer for full stack DRAS, uh, which Oracle's, you know, right now it's in beta program, but we are testing it on this application. As soon as that is GA, we are going to uh, implement for this, uh, this application. And once we are comfortable, it's running as expected, we plan to take that to our customers as well. And then uh, also uh, we have implemented the zero trust network access using TailScale as a edge uh, for edge access. In addition to that, we are looking at a couple of other uh, options, uh, like NetFoundry is one of our partner. Uh, we are looking at how to you know, bring in NetFoundry access mechanism for uh, this application. Well, Praveen, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you today and learning a little bit about your uh, workload on Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Thank you, Mike, for you know, having me and giving us an opportunity uh, to explain our you know, uh, whole uh, secure landing zone. Hey, did you like what you learned? Make sure to check out this video or this link, and of course, subscribe now.